Section 7, Prometheus and Themis, Blending the Binary. Having made the rounds of investigation, we spiral back um, and arrive insofar as it allows itself to be fully articulated at the conclusion. So what drives this cinematic obsession with binaries of technological mind and monstrous body, masculine and feminine, the one and the many, the cogito and the collective, nature and culture. The movies all seem to underscore the following thesis. Man may obliterate both nature and culture, but life goes on and moves ever onward, if only for the cockroach or insatiable alien predators. The other theme that we considered, the idea of the technologies as sublime forms of mater, merits, close to, merits a closer look. As Gigrish himself points out, psyche, like the web, has transcended the individual brain container. How can this not represent the power of the feminine on some level? A proverbial rise of the machines, as Marlin noted, feeling still is. The imaginal life still is, facts to which any sensible human subject will attest. Despite all logical negation, a presence remains. Life empirically and factually wants to be. 7.1, reuniting Prometheus and Themis. This feeling thinking binary, along with all the others that we've brought into, li into the light, leads us back to the central binary that this in investigation seeks to work through, and it essentially unfolds thusly. A sort of goddess feminism through Themis on one hand, or a pushing off into patriarchal monotheism through perhaps Prometheus on the other. The more difficult work lies in integrating the latter. Even if we did not steal the fire, we are all tethered to the destiny of Prometheus, which is why Karenyi identified the Titan as the very archetype of all human striving. If this is so, then it follows that there may be something of his story that is ours, if not archetypally, then semiotically and empirically to the extensive reach of the meanings that constellate around him including patriarchy. While we ponder that point, Prometheus has yet to tend to his bride. Pandora has opened the box. All the chaos is out. This is plain to see in any news headline. And faith and hope remain trapped inside. Bound to that rock, uh, oblivious to the complexities of connection, he requires a mother and child reunion prophesied, but as of yet unfulfilled. As conceivably as Freud mythologized Oedipus, it is not unreasonable to speculate that each of us moderns in our individuation journeys carries this torch of Prometheus on a more sublime level of communion with the collective than Freud or Jung were capable of conceiving this self-creation or soul-making, to borrow from Hillman, must be explored in harmony with the cultural domain under the guidance of Themis and the more connected, grounded ways of knowing to which she points. An infolding of the meanings that surround Prometheus and Themis is perhaps the core reactor needed to blend the binary that continues to act out cognitively and culturally in the Western psyche. Jung invoked the conjunctio, or union of opposites, to highlight the multiple polarities that must be alchemically turned into one another in order to individuate. Thanks to our detective work, we have worked past the binary of hero innovators and monstrous materia, the one and the many, and the other polarities imposed by the rise of monotheism and titanism. Reclaiming the hand of the feminine in caring for and nourishing culture and mindful of her devouring collective manifestations, we begin to see a way out of the binary. Whitmont's uh, revision of a cultural theory posited by Eric Newman uh, reinforces this updated blended critique of the Prometheus mythology. Newman posited a three-stage model of cultural evolution that begins with an undifferentiated or Euroboric phase that progresses into the matriarchal age 
in which the great mother-centered consciousness of life and death emerges and allegedly culminates with an individualistic, ego-based, masculine age of reason. Whitmont revised Newman's critique around a longing for integration of the repressed feminine into the oppression of patriarchal monotheism. He uses this lens to rediscover evidence of the same sort of fragile need of men for the feminine principle. For example, in the grail quests, lonely journeys of errant knights seeking the goddess in the form of a vessel. Echoing points raised earlier, Whitman, Whitmont warns of Mother Nature's revenge if we do not attain this integrated fourth stage through an optimization of the feminine and the masculine. Section 7.2, the other and blended perspective. Finally, we may even be ready to let go of the primordial gendered ways of understanding the union of the one and many. Levinas's parallel notion of the self same and the other present an apt distillation that serves to blend the binary. Seeking to ameliorate what he perceived as an unresolved discussion of the Cartesian cogito in continental philosophy, Levinas forces the Western subject to confront the basic and poignant encounter with the face of the other. In this gaze, the self-same is immediately presented with the incomparable and overwhelming significance of the other, constituted not only by the complexities of the empirically factual person facing him or her, but also the infinity of others eventually pointing to infinite alterity. For Levinas, a Lithuanian Jew and allied officer who served time in a Nazi POW camp and suffered the loss of many family members to the Holocaust. It was from it was flight from this primordial encounter with the other that drove the West drive to obliterate it through conquest. Levinas's philosophy is premium blend and it is of immense importance in working through to the dialogic that drives the Prometheus theme of story through all its manifestations. Levinas, in warning against the inherent violence of thematizing the other, suggests that its articulation necessarily undermines its absolute alterity. Consequently, we paradoxically and simultaneously exalt and do violence to the Themis myth theme in equating her with a sublime and ultimately limitless notion of the other that exists outside of the self. While the feminine traditionally embraces all on the margin, including, for example, Baba's post-colonial other, Spivak has warned us that feminist critique tends to miss the mark in translating the colonized other. However, many may be constitu constituted in the other, leaving us warns us not to lose sight of the infinite alterity over the shoulder of the other subject. Jung's conjuntio, applied to the other, reminds us that it is always a moving target. In contrast to Lacan's binary of the projected lowercase other and the uppercase other of the larger social linguistic milieu, Jung reminds us that the two are always in dialogue. This is a conception that ultimately fits with Levinas's other, as unothering is constituted as conversation that n it never is finished, or as he describes it, a saying that renders the said, as manifested in all that has been documented in Western discourse, subject to the sort of detective work followed in this paper. That said, Levinas' own philosophy is highly blended with the feminine through Kabbalic figures like Shekinah. One wonders if a philosophy such as Levinas's rich with feeling and ethics, would have been possible, if not for the feminine. While in the postmodern era, we, have, we all have access to feeling and connected wisdom, and for that matter, all the baggage of the inflated cogito, it makes sense to keep such primordial, elemental feminine principles in focus, even if their ghostly, indefinite alterity refuses their absolute structuring. 7.3, possible directions for blending the binary. Within the aforementioned limitations, let us extend our investigation of what is constituted in the blend. 
As the new or exotic physics reminds us, particle and wave are blended. Mind can shift matter at the sub subatomic level. Another solution posited by archetypal psychology is to degender psyche. Though Jung casts doubt on the integration of the anima and the animus, Rowland uses postmodernism as the platform for opening access to all of the archetypes, including the aforementioned distinctions. To elaborate on a point raised earlier, the feminine and masculine represent much more sublime energies in the engine of human striving, cultural and cognitive aspects of the psyche that are constantly churning or blending one into the other. The wisdom of connection and pushing off cannot be pinned down. Prometheus and Themis, for example, point forward both logically and mythically in their own ways to complementary notions of global. Global has its cerebral, as well as its geographic sense of hemispherality. When we split off into binaries, the most odious being the baggage of masculine versus feminine, we should not be surprised to see literal manifestations of global that are short-sighted into short sales rather than cultivated into a more grounded global thinking that honors caring and connection. Prometheus and Themis, the many and the one, the self-same and the other, all point to this core, which is dialogic, not dialectical. Dialectical truth demands a grand one. Postmodernism and heteroglossia instead point to long repressed voices of the many. And there are many, many directions we could take this, this blending constituted in the conjunctio uh, of Prometheus and Themis into. Uh, we've already raised several, starting with the ontology of development that transcends the binaries of cognition culture. Education and educating are also fair target for blending the binaries. We try to keep up with Prometheus's shifting movements and in institutions of learning, which lead us to consider the relative merits of an education grounded in creativity and imagination versus technology and analytical reasoning. On a global scale, the blending of Prometheus and Themis comes fully into view as we confront creativity versus innovation in the global workplace. Section A, concluding thoughts. To come full circle, it's not clear where Hollywood is heading as regards the present discussion. It is widely known that really Scott was criticized by his alien fan base for excursions into ontology and mythology. At this writing, the release of Alien Covenant is less than two months away. As for which way the franchise is headed, Scott assures his alien fans that it will, quote, scare the living shit out of you, unquote. So as far as blending the binary is concerned, we should perhaps not get our hopes up. That said, he has released a scene in which the protagonist, a young woman, convenes a team of colonists around a table, pictured here, words of encouragement as they embark on their mission to a new world. Perhaps in the midst of blood and gore and monsters, something of Themis's ghost will sneak through this filmic frame. And sadly, as the footnote will point out, this was not to be. So several years later, I write, sadly, this was not to be, judging from Prometheus Covenant. The heroine protagonist of Prometheus maintains only a ghost, ghostly feminine flashback presence. Ultimately, we find out that she has been brutally dissected. After the relative failure of the film in box office revenue, Scott declared, quote, quote, the beast is cooked, unquote. So as Themis reigns the long arc in the story of human progress, and as audiences outgrow a titanic fixation on gore and morphing, perhaps she may yet have her day. Thank you.